Okay. Hi, um, my name is Mason. I'm um, with Jonathan. Our formal policy claim is that the United States should legalize marijuana for adults uh, 21 and over. Our significance is that it would increase uh, both commercial and medical benefits for our nation as a whole. Our first point is that it's a uh, financial burden on the United States keeping it illegal through um, arrests, prison costs, and un uh, tax revenue. Our second point is that marijuana can be used as a less toxic painkiller and can alleviate the symptoms of cancer treatment. And our third point is that marijuana does not lead to harder drugs like opioids or cocaine or stuff like that. Our first point is that it's a financial burden in the United States uh, through keeping it uh, illegal through uh, prison, uh, rest costs, and untaxed revenue. Uh, we spend approximately $3.6 billion uh, on incarceration and enforcement and possession crimes associated with marijuana in 2000 alone. Uh, that's from the Huffington Post. Um, uh, also from the Huffington Post, uh, we spent $750 per marijuana arrest, and an arrest rate as high as one arrest every 42 seconds. That's over 1 million man hours taken away by the New York City Police Department from 2002 to 2012. Furthermore, from the American Civil Liberties Union, um, enforcement is not practical on a large scale. Uh, in 2010, 52% of all drug-related busts came from marijuana. 88% of those arrests came not from like large operations like large selling, but mainly for small-time and possession-based crimes. We shouldn't be wasting our time with these possession-based. Um, oh yeah. Furthermore, a, we can uh, increase our tax revenue. Colorado in 2015 collected more than $135 million in taxes, fees uh, from sales of medical marijuana, as well as uh, licensing and distribution prices. Uh, furthermore, uh, a, uh, uh, analytic, an analytics company, uh, New Frontier, suggested that federally, federally legal marijuana could uh, introduce another $131.8 billion in aggregate federal tax revenue by the year 2025. Um, furthermore, marijuana can be used as a less toxic painkiller um, and also alleviate the symptoms of uh, cancer treatment. We're not saying that marijuana can outright cure cancer, because it, it won't. However, those who are going through chemotherapy, cannabis is a lot less uh, toxic and addictive as compared to opioids. Uh, this is coming from uh, an article from Medical News Today. Uh, it says that marijuana is one of the most effective tools to help alleviate the nausea and the lack of appetite that is uh, associated with uh, can or chemotherapy. Uh, furthermore, in 2018, the FDA approved a CBD-based medication uh, of treatment of two rare types of epilepsy. Uh, in clinical studies, they found a reduction of 39% of seizures per month. Um, and furthermore, they also had another study in 2017 which showed that CBD um, resulted in far fewer seizures with kids uh, with uh, Dravet syndrome uh, as compared to a placebo. And also, they estimated that dispensary programs, whether it be like medical or like legal um, dispensaries, reduced the number of opioid prescriptions by about 3.7 million daily doses. Um, in states that allowed homegrown marijuana, were uh, saw an estimated 1.8 million fewer pills dispensed per day of opioids. Um, furthermore, um, marijuana does not lead to harder drugs. Um, this whole notion of marijuana being a gateway drug it is not an accurate representation of marijuana or how drugs affect the population as a whole. This gateway drug theory, um, this is coming from psychology today, is based on two assumptions. The first assumption is that you experiment with like tobacco, alcohol, weed, like the low, um, like the very like low basic drugs, and that turns you onto harder, harder drugs. The second assumption is that you form social groups doing these illicit activities, going to your drug dealer, he's going to introduce you to harder and harder substances, which make him more and more money. What the critics ignore is the fact that if cannabis was legalized and regulated, we would be, we would see a reduction in those black markets. Um, one uh, good point, this comes from medium.com, and it says that in 2012, uh, Colorado was the first state to legalize recreational marijuana, and according to Winslow, the cartel, uh, the Sinaloa cartel, suffered a 40% drop in marijuana sales in a single year. So they're taking money out of the black market and putting it into legal and tax revenue. Furthermore, in Japan, where marijuana is far less used in Western countries, this is coming from New York Times, 
The 2010 study, they found that 83% of illicit drug users did not smart, start out smoking pot in a country where pot is very, very hard to find. And so basically they're saying that it's not that these illegal drugs, this hard or these soft drugs are causing the problem, it's the people themselves, it's the uh, situations that they're involved in that cause them to be addicted. So marijuana should be legal for adults.